everybody day seven on facing our future selves and so here we go into architect land as we get ready to go into now week number two almost week number three really of what does life look like now going uh, in our future and as you can <clears throat> undoubtedly uh, assess we're going to be here for a little bit longer maybe you know 15 to 30 more days or more depending on which outlet you hear from your news so that brings us to so this day, what do we get to really face? We get to face what does life look like now with ourselves, more importantly, but also to inside and out, meaning inside our world, which has gotten very small, I'm sure, as you can undoubtedly know, right? <clears throat> but also to what does it look like going forward? So now we get to face our future selves. What does that really mean? Well, first of all, we have to start to understand that our prior selves was based on a series of stories memories, habits, and beliefs that helped us get to here, i.e., uh, you know, I'm an electrician, I'm a doctor, I'm a whatever, whatever you were, and probably still are from a certain point of view, but the form and functionality that goes along with that is obviously changed from the perspective that how we're going to do that is radically different. And now we sit in this time where we get to sit with ourselves and go, what does that really mean? Who am I without a story? Now, for some of us, we may be going through total transitionary changes, and maybe that's a good thing. And, you know, um, maybe it's just a thing. Maybe we could you know, let go of the judgment for a minute. But let's look at it from a perspective of today of who am I without the story? Now, when I say that comment to, you know, young architects in training or brand new architect masters who have just graduated, and I want to say congratulations, by the way, to all the new AITs, the architects in training who have come in this week and have joined the community and are learning and changing their lives already. Welcome to all of you and also to the new jumpers. There's over 200 of you now in the, in the new community, in the new system who are enjoying all of the free assets. So welcome once again. Um, and also to the architects that are now doing free uh, reflection sessions for you. So thank you for everybody in the community responding because it's always been about us, right? So let's look at ourselves without the story. Now, everybody has a story, right? And this is a part of our now story calling the COVID-19 pandemic of our time. And as we walk through this part of the story, we get a chance to look back at what our story was, commonly called the chapters of our life, right? And according to Septennial Law or the Law of Periodicity, you know, our lives are generally broken up in periods of seven years, you know, just kind of that space. And wherever you are on that, that chart kind of gives you an idea of what you're going through and what you're going to create. And as many of you know, um, I'm a part of two very powerful films uh, that are uh, coming into the world uh, this week, uh, Beyond the Secret, which is the long-awaited follow-up film to The Secret. Uh, Beyond the Secret, The Awakening is going to be releasing, and it'll take you from a law of attraction thought process of what we thought we knew, you know, almost some 20 years ago, um, at, that the law of attraction was linear to more of a 360. And you're going to be able to see that journey what we've learned and how you can start applying that into your world and not from a hocus pocus kind of way, but something that's really down to earth, booted in uh, and rooted, excuse me, in grounding that allow you to really kind of experience that from a perspective of, oh, okay, I can apply this now. But as we start to go through this, we get the, one of the things you get to look at is, and the next film, by the way, which we'll be releasing in a couple of weeks, I'm told here in late April, which is how thoughts become things. Right? How do our thoughts actually become belief structures? And you know, a lot of the great teachers, including myself, if I may be so bold to say that, are all in that film as well. And that's more of a thought processing of how do we create our belief structures? And you know, these are all things you're going to learn in depth and in detail in the jump. And you're also going to be able to learn them uh, in the architect community. They're all there for you. It's highly interactive, and I'm super excited. Finally, after a long period of about uh, five or six weeks of getting this together, the new interactive passion quiz will be coming in. That's absolutely free. It'll be on there as well. And it's going to take you through the series of questions. That's going to kind of give you a skew based on what you answer because it's multiple choice and it is interactive of where your passion is and sometimes, you know, where your passion isn't. And then you get to choose which is most important to you. So here comes the next thing. So as now as we get to look back now, what, are, what our chapters of our life have been, how do we apply that? What do we look at? Now we're going to look at, well, who am I without the story? So for example, Let's agree on a macro scale that many of the places of establishment, small businesses, mom and pops, all of those experiences that we once knew are probably going to be in a very, very different space when and this, this pandemic comes to whatever its end it's going to come to. And even post that, life will definitely change. 
you know, we've already talked about now social distancing, which is ironic, right? Um, from six feet. And as of this morning, when I was up early this morning, uh, you know, they're talking about moving it to 27 feet. Well, 27 feet is almost 10 yards. Well, that's, that's a lot of space, right? So then that begets the question, if you start using people as the analogy of how much space we have to keep between each other, then we can start asking the first question. Well, how much space is between my thoughts? If you're like most, it's a nanosecond. There's a thought, a thought, a thought, a thought, a thought, and you're constantly bombarding or being bombarded by your beautiful mind over here that is giving you uh, no space, right? And so we get to uh, start to unwind that. And when I say unwind it to people, people really get kind of lost in what unwind is. So I want to just kind of dive into that for a second. Unwinding isn't a long process unless you want it to be. It's not diabolical. It's not scary unless you're scared of what's at the bottom of that. But even then you created that too. It's part of your journey. Unwinding is looking at a belief structure that I created, the actions that surround that belief structure, the hierarchy of values that I get from keeping that belief structure, the actions that I perpetuate and continue to do that supports all of this. And then way down here at the bottom, you're going to discover when you created that experience for yourself and adopted it and ultimately the emotion that's driving it. Right? So when you talk about the emotion that's driving it, let's agree that right now, probably one of the deeper emotions that most of us are experiencing is fear. Now, that's not a rocket science aha to you in any way, shape, or form, but what might be, and I know you're wondering about that, is, hey, is it possible that most, maybe most of your life has been based off of fear? And if you're like most and you're willing to unwind what you've been doing to distract yourself, all of your doings and your job and the kids and the, the things and the, the cocktail parties and whatever we do to distract ourselves, no judgment in it, we just are really good at it. If you're really willing to look at it, there's a high degree of probability that it was always based on fear. But because we had all these other distractions out here that were bombarding our mind, which, you know, our mind has very specific rules. We all have them. And you'll, you'll learn that in the second day of the jump for those of you who are taking it. And again, it's free. Enjoy it. Knock yourself out. Um, that once the, once the distractions are gone, we start to come now, the walls feel like they're narrowing in. Some of you may be in experience in this. And you're going, oh my God, I, I'm so scared. I feel scared. But wait a minute, let's back up a step. The truth is if you're feeling fear now, there's a high degree of probability that fear's been there all along, but we just had all these other distractions that kept us from really diving into the story of ourselves. Now here's the, the funny part. Now, when you look at the story of yourself, it's really going to really ask you and invite you to do something that's very, very challenging at times. So I'm gonna not blow sunshine up your skirt because you know, the architects know me, the AITs know, and from those of you who have traveled my career for 30 years know that I'm one of those guys that says, you know, the rah-rah stuff only is going to go so far. Like, doggone it, people like you. You're awesome. This is great. Everything's going to be okay. Okay, well, maybe everything's not going to be okay, right? And I don't mean that we're talking about doomsday, but what I'm talking about is what you thought the story was from which you've created to this moment in your life for all of us has absolutely cataclysmically shifted. We don't even know what it's going to look like in the future. But isn't this the time now where we get to unwind how we've been living, what our belief structures have been, what we really thought was interesting, what we want to experience, because now more than ever, and, I'm, and forgive the timing, and maybe it's too soon, but it's poignant, so let's just call it out. You know, one of the most powerful questions we ask all new jumpers and all new architects in training when they come into the community is the same, is if you only had 30 days left to live, would you be doing anything you're doing right now? And undoubtedly, almost within seconds, every person who answers that question, and you'll be able to experience that in the new passion quiz, says no. So wait a minute. So we've been living our life here to four, meaning up to this moment, based on a bunch of series of distractions, paying the bills, building what we thought was a life, saving for our rainy day, our weekends, our vacations, you know, our, our things, our distractions, right? Now that's all been suspended. Now we get to look at what we're really sitting in. What have we really been either running from, not willing to create, not willing to admit, not willing to own about ourselves? Most likely the fear has been there all along, you know, myself included. You know, I'm not going to sit here and blow sunshine up your skirt just because I've got a bunch of letters before and after my name and I got 30 years of experience and all this other stuff in my resume that I don't experience it too. I think the number one challenge that I'm challenged by personally in this time is so many people now are coming with the kumbaya experience and we've got all pulled together and yeah, 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 and this rah rah -ism, but that's not really effective change, is it? See, a real effective change gets you to unwind it all the way down. 
And the architect community is committed to that. Now, many of you know that this year I said I was only going to allow 1,000 AITs into the community. I'm still holding to that, by the way, and that number is dwindling rapidly. Now, is there space left? Of course. Have I hit the 1,000? No, but I'm committed to that. And that's because those 1,000 people understand that during this time, you have been given an interesting gift. And I know that sounds really odd, but it is. And that's a gift of you can't distract yourself from all the stuff that you were doing. You can't distract yourself from the stuff, the things, and the because you can't. We've got government restrictions, you've got federal mandates, you've got international mandates, travel restrictions, businesses aren't there anymore. There's very little things to do to distract yourself, but isn't that exactly what we really want? Because you see, if we ask the question, would you be doing anything in your life if you only had 30 days left to live, now has some really powerful meaning. But more importantly, it had powerful meaning all along. We just had a belief of illusion that we had time. But you never really had time. That's just more self-hypnosis of you convincing yourself that you had time. But we really never have any more time. You have what you have. You know, there, I think, there, I forget the statistics where it came from, but the, they say the average person has roughly 26,000 days on their life, on an average life. And I think it's the 88 or two, if my memory serves correctly. It's maybe off here and there, but get, get the point. So you don't really have more time. So how you spend that time becomes infinitely powerful. And now during this time where you have seemingly nothing but time, how come we're so afraid to go ahead and unwind this and say, well, let's look at our new selves going forward. But in order to look at a new self, we have to be willing to look at what we've been doing, creating, running from, and ultimately not allowing ourselves to truly experience in the most non-judgmental way possible with this bigger macro vision. So let me introduce it to you. It's part of the architect community. And it starts with the noble truth. And the noble truth says, none of us are getting off this planet alive. Fact. Not a single human being on this planet who has existed from since known history has ever left the planet alive. Not one. So that's a known fact, right? And so when we start looking at the fact that death is imminent, it then shifts you into the fear that I was talking about that's probably been there all along and in architect land that is called the thin membrane of fear. And it is literally wrapped around damn near everything that we do almost from the time that we come on the planet in birth. It, re it reacts in our relationships, it reacts in our personal being, it reacts in our, uh, reacts in our insecurities, how we choose jobs, what we do for travel, what we think is dangerous, what we don't, risk assessment, flight, fight or flight, yada, 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 et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. But that means if the fear is always there, it's always been there, which means it's grown over time. And what we've done to address it is either A, suppress it, stuff it down with all of our doings and our things and all the stuff that we you know, need to do, we've done here before, which have now been taken away and our blinders have been opened up to the point where we don't have the choice anymore to go out and distract ourselves. Now you can create distractions inside your home or your sequester, wherever you are, your quarantine, I'm sure. However, there comes a time when the distractions are going to run out. Then what do you do? So my question to you becomes, if you really only had that time left to live and you're aware that you've been creating distractions, you get to unwind yourself. What does a new you look like? If you've been watching all the media out there, one of the most popular themes that's going on right now and something that the architect community has been very passionate about for many, many years is education. And I don't mean education, what we've done before, where like kids go to school and they basically are playing and they learn a bunch of stuff that we learned that really doesn't apply to your life. I'm talking about education, about educating people about how their mind works. How can they really address fear? How can they unwind the things that they've created? How can they unwind the doings that they've done that are the distractions? How can they unwind the things to get to the core truth? and do it with a step-by-step -step system and a community that will support you. And probably the most powerful thing and something that I've really come very, very proud of the architect community uh, myself and all of its, uh, its grads is really an unconditional space. Now, are we perfect? <laughs> no, not a chance in hell. Do we strive to be better? Absolutely. But our better isn't in our doings. Our better is in our being, how we choose to be. So now more than ever, at least in my fantasy, it could be hopefully yours. Now more than ever, it becomes impec uh, impar um, imperative, excuse me, becomes imperative that we get to look at what our new selves look like. But in before we start going out and start creating this new self, whether it's online as a guru or whatever, whatever the hell it is, I don't know, I don't care, right? Whatever you're doing, 
wouldn't it be interesting if we unwind it first? Because if we don't, by the very laws of who we are, by the laws of psychology that have been around for a very, very long period of time, we are doomed to repeat and become over time, even with our good act, even with our new ways of doing, not we're, but uh, we're not we our new ways of being. We are doomed to repeat them, which means now more than ever is a time to really dive into the beautiful darkness of ourselves. You know, I did a post today on my Instagram. You can see it over on Instagram at TravisFox360. And it was actually sent to me by one of our recent grads, uh, Sherry, who was, uh, her architect advisor was uh, Rob Hanrider, we call AKA Sage, who is also a council member. And she sent this thing to me and it really kind of sums it up. When or when are we gonna stop labeling our darkness as evil? And when are we gonna stop labeling the darkness as bad? Because the truth is, and this is what's so beautiful about this post, and you can read it, so I'm gonna do my best to, to quote it, although it's gonna be paraphrased. But if you think about this, the universe in and of itself is almost all dark. Out there, look out at night, the sky and the beautiful lights shine up, but the darkness is what's between the light. And you think about a child being born or in its incubation stays inside a, a woman is in darkness is where we've conceived in dark. A, uh, a seed which is planted in the darkness of the soil grows up and to come into the light. When oh when are we actually gonna dive in? Now for many of us, and you know, this has been the quest of my personal life for 30 years and that of the architect community now, is the quest of understanding that it is the darkness much where we go. It is the darkness from which we have run. It is the darkness which has been mislabeled. It is the darkness that has been bastardized as the bad, evil thing. Yet here's the irony. That's where everything starts. That's where we're gonna end too. Because when you take the great journey, commonly called death, lights go out and you take that next step. Now, what if we were to shift our new selves into a concept that said, hey, you know, the darkness isn't a bad thing unless I place my fear into that and I'm scared of the darkness because I stuffed it down so long ago. The hurts and the grievances and and the, the shame and the guilt and whatever the hell else is down there. I've stuffed it down there so long ago with all of my doings of my old self that now when all of the doings are taken away, my real self finally shows up. When oh when are we gonna maybe admit, I'll admit it myself and I'll jump out there with you, that maybe the darker part of ourselves, quote unquote, is the real who we are, who we think we are, or excuse me, is the real who we are versus who we think we are. And we've spent so much of our time doing and creating all these personality parts to present, you know, I mean, here's Travis Fox, you know, the father, Travis Fox, the son, Travis Fox, the, you know, the husband, Travis Fox, the doctor, Travis Fox, the speaker, Travis Fox, the CEO, Travis Fox, blah, 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 the friend, and just all these personality parts. And each part has a slightly different variance given the, the external situation I'm looking at, or more importantly, the one I want to present, as opposed to, wait a minute, I'm not saying the darkness is bad. And I'm not saying that there are things aren't down that aren't going to scare the living crap out of you, but they're there already. Where or where are you going to run? The longest singles relationship you'll ever have in your life family is you. Now, whether you enjoy that relationship with yourself, that's a whole nother story. I can tell you when I was in my 20s, it was a very tough relationship. Sometimes I felt like I was very two, two different people. There was Travis Fox, but then there was Dr. Fox, right? And Dr. Fox had to have, you know, all the answers, had to be perfect, had to have the perfect look, the, you know, the thing, and so much vanity and a bunch of BS that a lot of times I felt very alone. Now, was I alone? No but I felt alone and more importantly, lonely. And maybe in during this time, you're feeling that as well. And the difference becomes understanding that the reason I felt lonely is because deep down inside in places I had stuffed down, I wasn't gonna talk and let the real Travis out because people find out I might be very passionate. I'm very intense. I'm very committed to this vision that I've given, been given by great spirit, you know, some 20 years ago now and continue to pursue it uh, called the architect community. And it's about the thousand AITs this year as an example. And those who are ready to wake themselves up and understand that what they've been doing all along is really just an invitation for themselves to wake themselves up to what's down here in the beautiful darkness. Because down in the darkness is where you're going to find the truth. You know, here's an example. I'll bring it to a base root for those of you who like the, the chakra system of the chakra system. Let's bring it down to the, the base chakra, the chakra of two, the second one, which is our, our sexuality and our, our sexual presentation, right? Isn't it in the dark? when we engage with our lovers where the real you comes out, 
you know, the, the real things that you want to experience, the real things. And then here's the part that's the flip side of that. How often do we talk a really good game when we're flirting and we're talking in front of, we're seducing and we're playing these you know, psychological games and the, the presentation sounds really cool on paper. But when you finally get to that experience, everybody freezes up because you don't want to be judged as a freak or a pervert or a wacko or what the frick ever. So either way, we're in the dark and we're not really facing ourselves. And that's a base core example. Now, ele elevate that up through your sequences, starting, you know, moving through self-identity, moving to your heart system, moving to your, your, your throat, how you see the how you see the projections of the world into the ethereal realms, and ultimately your connection with your higher self, your, your God, whatever you want to call it. I call it great spirit or architect. You call it what you want. But what if we came to that space? So how do we get the deal with our new selves starts with that the old self, the story that we've been running along has now been taken away from us. And in a very weird way, and this is really kind of the first start of the jump, right? You get to own that you helped create this global pandemic. Now, for many of you, that's going to be like a big pill of bullshit to swallow. I get it. I get it. But think about it. Where else in time have we gotten the entire world to stop? To stop. One side could stop because they're having a thing or a war or famine or whatever the hell they're going on. And maybe another side would stop. But for the first time in known history, or at least in our history, the world stopped. Maybe, just maybe, all of us at a deeper level, one, we're not up here, no, here, not the one we talk about at cocktail parties, not the cells we've been portraying here to four, but the deeper one, we have all come to the subconscious awareness. We needed to stop. We needed to slow down. We needed to unwind all this shit because we are headed right off a damn cliff and somewhere deep down inside in places we don't talk about in cocktail parties in the darkness, we knew it was all full of shit. Hi, my name is Travis Fox and I'm full of shit. Everything I'm about to tell you, you already know. There's not an answer I'm about ready to give you or a direction or an invitation that you already haven't felt, heard, or experienced. The difference is, are you ready? The architect community is about a step-by-step -step system for you to wake yourself up. We don't have any answers for you. In fact, I find it really incredulous that anybody's out there even saying that they do. Because if they did, they wouldn't be on the damn planet, right? I mean, I know you know this, but... The difference is if we're going to stay in our doing of our old selves and then expect the new future self to have a different result, we truly are setting ourselves up for the same crap all over and over again. The difference, the funny thing is about patterns, and if you know anything about them at a basic precursory level or even at a depth level, once you become aware of a pattern, like we all now are aware of this pandemic now in some form or another, the, the time between the pattern looping itself and repeating gets shorter and shorter and faster and faster which means the next one coming around is going to come around quicker. You know, there's already rumors out of China. And again, I'm not, you know, spreading rumors or fear that, you know, there's going to be a second wave that this virus is going to mutate and there's going to be a second wave going around. Okay, great. All right, we'll have to deal with that. But in that time, in the gap, the darkness between what we know, quote unquote, and what we think we're going to know this next 30 days that we're about ready to enter to here into April, wouldn't it be interesting if we dove into the dark? Because when you dive into the dark and you pull out that stuff, and now is a time is a perfect time to do it. And you have a community that is going to stand behind you and support you. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, what will your new self look, act, and feel like going forward? There's only one way to find out. Now, in response, as you know, a couple of weeks ago, the architect community and I got together and said, what can we do to help? So the first thing we did is we offered the first three days of our jump training, which is a 14 day experience and over 15 hours of bona fide step-by-step -step training, where you're going to learn what's happening in your brain and in your heart on a step-by-step -step with information that's going to back it up. Two, you're going to be able to apply this immediately and see results. So you can actually gauge where you're at and you can assess yourself because isn't that the point? And three, you get to experience it in real time. It's not, gee, wait and shows up. You know, I think it in 400 days later, it shows up. It's like right now. So we offered the first three days of the jump for free. It's still there. There is now many other free programs that are audio programs that are meditations. Some of them are hypnotherapy programs that are from earlier in my career that I've re-released. These are all free. They are unlimited use. You're not going to be upsold anything. You're not going to be dead, nothing. Just use them right? Because if you don't, then you already know that you've made the decision 
not the choice, the decision to stay exactly where you are and you're going to repeat the pattern. Only this time you have no excuses of I had somewhere to be, I had a job to do, the kids, the thing, that's all gone. That's all taken away from you now. Now it becomes, are you ready to face the beautiful darkness of yourself? It's scary at times, I get it. But what would it be like if you had an entire community that would back you up? that would do it, who have walked the same walk and are still walking the same walk, myself included. Inside our CRM, our customer relations management software, you'll be contacted. We'll text you, we'll give you support, we'll set up uh, free uh, reflection sessions for you, we'll answer questions, they're inside our entire community. And again, it is not, hey, give us your credit card and we won't bill you kind of crap. No, you just register, it's there, simple, done. Put your profile in, you'll be contacted, you can make friends with people all over the world who are either in the jump stage or they're AITs or they're in mastery themselves or they're recent grads. And, and then you can have, talk to the graduate council and they'll help you as well. And I'm in there all the time. Plus we've added a new thing. I've added my the self-confidence and self-esteem audio program because I really believe uh, that many of us walk around acting like we've got it all together. And in today's world, that's gonna be really challenging because nobody has it together. We're, we're making crap up as we go on a global scale. So what if we came to a place where our esteem and our self-worth was based on our being, not on our doing? What if our self-worth was based on how we actually can connect with other people without the agenda of, I know more than you do? Because we don't. Or what if we could just come to a place where, you know what, you could sleep at night without having those thoughts run around and rip your head apart. Feel like you want to just rip your skull off because your brain won't shut the F up, right? Anybody had that moment yet? If you haven't, you will. Okay. But the darkness needs to be reframed. And so this whole week as we go through this, this week moving into April now and probably the next realistically 30 days as it seems to be based on what they're telling us as we go through this process, we're going to be diving into the darkness, right? And we're going to be making sure that you have every opportunity that we can provide. In fact, new programs. I released the, the first program I've released in a year. It's there for free. It's the immunity meditation. There's now architecting vinyasa, which is there from uh, Rob and Connie, who are both uh, architect graduate and council members and, um, uh, come from very different walks of life, but are also yogis as well. They teach online yoga for you. It's for free, so you can actually still stay in shape because we're all having to figure out how the hell to do that now, right? Uh, other architects are now responding, you, and Sarah's in the CRM. I'm in the CRM as well, uh, helping people move through. Is there other things you can do to go deeper in your training? Yes, of course. I'm not going to blow sunshine up your skirt and say that they're not. We reduce any kind of pricing across the board to the point it's absolutely at its lowest, it's at its lowest it can ever be, given all the loads that we have to take. But the bottom line is, I don't care if you ever do it or not. I'm looking for the thousand architects, right? I'm looking for those thousand AITs, and many have already responded, and that number is starting to dwindle down. And when I hit a thousand, I'll turn it off. I will. And again, that's not a threat. It's just I know what architect has told me in my heart. This is what I'm looking for for this year, because now more than ever, the people who are ready to change their older selves, the people who are ready to shift into that newer self, this is the time to do it. This is the time when the invitation and the call for the architects is most strong. This is when we're looking for those who are really ready to change their lives. And we're going to walk through. Now, we're not going to do it for you, but we'll walk with you, right? We'll walk with you. And the funny thing is, many of you who are trying to figure out what your new self looks like going from this old self to this new self, what is my passion? What is it? The funny thing is when you dive into the darkness and you start pulling all this stuff out, and we'll show you exactly how to do it, by the way, and the jump's a great place to start. Right? It's If you go through the full jump, I'll tell you up front, it's 97 bucks. Simple. That's it. You get the first three days for free. You'll experience it at, on us and all the other stuff is free to use as much as you want. You're not going to get bombarded and called and, hey, but wait, there's more. Just not our style. We, we're sending out the invitation. If it resonates with you, do it. If it doesn't, then okay. Thanks for, thanks for coming around checking it out. But more importantly, wouldn't it be interesting if we actually created our new selves from a whole new way of being versus a way of doing now, the first step of that is to recognize when you actually contemplate it and you feel your heart beating and you feel that, that that anticipation come up like it does right now, when you feel that, what does your brain do? What is this thing telling you? Oh, no, this is just a bunch of more bullshit, blah, blah, blah. All right, that's the first start. Isn't that, that over here? Because right now you don't know what you don't know. That's why we're giving it to you for free. Plus also the assets so you can see them. There's the stress and worry in there. There's programming the A, which is for those of you who are homeschooling your children now to help them can stay on track and continue their studies. But isn't this the time to also take your family through this? 
You see, because education is going to change. It's already moving online. We all know that. Many schools of, around the world have shut down for the rest of the year. It's going to be online. So maybe we could take a different tack. And the way that we really change the world isn't necessarily about, hey, let's get together and sing Kumbaya. But what if we teach our children this set of educational skills so that their new self as they come through this is completely based on a different set of skills. It's based on this set of skills, understanding how to manage this versus being controlled by it. That keeps me up at night. That's something I'm super passionate about. It is something the passion of all the architects, and I'll speak for every single one of them around the world, old and new, in training or graduate, because we understand that education now more than ever is going to take on a new definition, a new self. It's already moving from one space to another. The question is, are you going to respond and follow to it? Well, that's up to you. Anyways, I want to just kind of dive about that today. Again, you can take the, the free link. It's right there. It's architecting360.com forward slash register free. You can click into that. It's absolutely free, right? You register it. All you can do is register it and all the assets will be right there for you. You can see it, create your profile. You'll be contacted by the Sierra. I'm just welcoming you to the community here to support you in every way we can. And of course, as we go through this next month, we'll be diving deeper into the darkness of what exactly we want to look at. Now, sometimes the darkness I know has been mislabeled, and that's why I want you to go to my uh, Instagram page so you can see it, or over on our Facebook page at at Travis Fox 360 on Facebook as well. It's Travis Fox 360 across the board, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, easy to find. You can also go to our YouTube channel, which is over Travis Fox Architect of Bean. Check out a bunch of things over there. And if you're ready, click the link, come find out, experience it. The good news is, once you learn something, you can't unlearn it and you're always expanding. But if you continue to do what you've always done, eventually over time, you're going to shrink. Remember, the laws of the universe always say you're either expanding or contracting. There is no such thing as static. I love and appreciate you all. Thanks for coming in with me today. Make sure you dive into the darkness and I'll see you in the architect community. Take care. Be safe. Bye-bye.